Matt, welcome back to the shop. And uh, just a quick, quick video about this. So I've 3D printed out the P rod. <coughs> so this is a 125 arrangement due to its not bore. We'll just call it. A lot of people are saying, how can it be a bore or a cylinder when it's. Look, I'm using terminology that everyone understands. So now we've got rid of that. You know, you'd call this a piston crown. It's not exactly a piston, is it? You'd call this the rod section. It's not exactly it's, its own entity, but who cares, right? Um, you know, for rotors, they call them the housing and stuff like that, and rotor and side irons and all of it. They call them that because it's completely different. This is almost like a piston engine, <coughs> but any rod. So we've got the P rod. Um, and this is the latest iteration it'll change as always but i was just printing out just this housing and just this just so i can demonstrate something that a lot of people have been saying um and what people have been saying is you know you the forces are this rattling around and the um you know the clearance gap and stuff like this this is the problem with cad right with cad you have no idea what size this is now you can see that it's not big at all and width wise it's not thick at all right it really isn't it's less than just less than an inch you know what i mean this thing is not big right and like i say this would be a 125 it sorry it's not a 125 it's a 140 but let's just say it's a 125. You just make this a tiny bit thinner and it's a 125. 125 plus 125 is 250. 250 plus 250 is 500. With this being a two stroke, that would be like a 500cc two stroke. Double the thickness of this. And then that's one engine. <laughs> and then times it by four. So eight thicknesses of this. So eight thicknesses of this. So basically about that. And you'd have the complete engine and for a four cylinder version that is still tiny look at like look at the size of this thing if i span my hand across this i'm nearly touching the bottom right or going from the bottom there we're nearly at the top this engine is tiny this is tiny right because you got to remember in the two stroke and all those two this is the coolant jacket this is where spark plugs go stuff like that it is tiny right so the next thing I want to show and demonstrate with this is this. I'm going to probably do a backing plate and I'm probably going to put a crank in this just so we can look at things, you know what I mean, whatever. But there's the rod perfectly, you know, up straight kind of thing like that. <clears throat> and a lot of you are going to notice there's a big gap here. Iterations, motherfuckers, iterations. It's one thing after another. I'm looking at the engineering of these things, not worrying about the specific shape. It's baby steps, basically. It's what you do. You change something, you check it out. And you'll just, like I said, this is nowhere near the final. But if I go to pull this, it's stuck. It's genuinely stuck. All right, that's it, it's stuck. Same as if we go to the bottom, I can't go up. I can't go up, that's it, it's stuck. It is three floating, it is stuck in there, right? Because you've got to tip it for it to go up and you've got to tip it for it to come down, you've got to tip it for it to go up. Now this is the thrusting at present, right? Because you've also got to take in thermal expansion coefficients and stuff like that. That is the thrust in there, that's the rattle, yeah? Which is too much, you know what I mean? Like I said, we've got. I haven't even started working out co thermal coefficients and stuff. I'm just getting close. But as you can see, it's not crazy. And when you thermally expand this, it's not going to be much, but it is a. It, it's not going to be much. It's a beam. Um, but I haven't put a coating on this yet. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And the thing is, because we don't have the crank. That's the maximum deflection. To get that, I'm wiggling this around a bit as well. All right, so if we try and well, we try and pivot that, or move this, actually, that's probably the best thing to do. Um, 
you can get to certain you can get to certain positions so you can lock it like that so that's locked right so there's no wiggle i don't know exactly where we are yet so this might seem like a lot but i don't know exactly i'm still moving everything around the crank might be more inboard than that the crank pin so we might actually be quite tight hence why i need to print it. what is it i'm just giving people an idea of you know i'm rubbing this around the outside here and that's not how it works but that gives us enough clearance when you do that you know what i mean but this is the idea there's your combustion chamber shape as you come up you know and then what basically what happens is, is it it snaps shut right it's not usually touching but it's like that and it snaps shut these corners will represent more of a sweep that we can get out of that i've still got to do that work and so on i like having things like this and this is what the 3d printer technology is great for i know people keep on thinking they're going to make all your parts out of 3d printing maybe one time one time in like 50 years or 100 years from now where things are super duper it's actually the materials with 3d printing the problem moving the head fast enough that's the easy bit um it's just finding materials that gel well and how to melt them how to do this how to do that how to fuse them how to bond them how to whatever regardless so you can see that's basically the motion what we're trying to do which isn't if you look at the head of it it isn't madness like a lot of people seem to think it is it's not that crazy you know what i mean the clearance is here People keep on asking, this is where a side seal is going to go, and the same on the reverse. Don't ask why it's white, changing filament. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it's good to have something like this, it's good to have something tangible. Because um, I literally do, I just sit there and, hmm, hmm. Because, you know, it is quite thick. I'll be able to take some material out in certain places. I am trying to go for something, and this is the thing. If we forget this for a minute, this port bit here, because you could redesign that. You could design it to be just like the people have mentioned in the comments and stuff, and I mentioned in a video. It could just be extrusions, right? That is a shape that you can pretty much extrude. This is a shape you can damn right extrude. And if you were making it out of very particular aluminium alloys, you could just extrude these things. You imagine just extruding an engine out and then they just lob off bits. Yeah, and this is what I was trying to describe. It's so much easier with these parts. Is you extrude it out. I'll try and put a video up now of an extruder. And you just extrude it out, stop, or you just, you've got your long billet like that and you just saw it off, right? You just literally saw it off and you can have three or four saws in a bank, in a line, just all cutting at the same time. So it all falls apart. Minimal wastage, right? You make this like a millimeter bigger each way, right? And then you like this, you've already got your holes because you've extruded it. So you just have a jig that comes up like this right and it's just pins pins that just hold it you know what i mean you have pins here then you have other pins to come and meet it like that or whatever um and you can do any other machine in you know like other holes and stuff so you can basically hold it but you just have little toes you can have little toes out of the sides right that a machine comes in and grabs and holds like that and then you just machine it just fucking machine it off and then you flip it over and then you machine that side. Or you could have something that comes in here, holds it like this and it machines that side. And then you go like that, flip it over, you come in, it expands. I'm doing this if you can see that. It holds it like that, machines that face. Big fly cutter just comes in kind of thing. Or you know, a multiple cutter head. Straight across it, that's it, job done. 
it can be rough machine like this rough finish on here because you're going to gasket the shit out of it anyway. And then, <laughs> job done, right? That would be it. For this, you know what I mean? All these holes are extruded, right? So you don't need to fuck around. All these things will be extruded. You'd have holes here, just say, to bolt these on. They would be machined. Fucking piss easy. You machine that surface. So while it's held down here, you can machine this, and then a cutter comes in here and machines that fucking... doesn't matter. Same thing with this. As is at the moment, all you'd have to do is machine this face, flip it over, machine that face, and then drill, drill, and then you'd have to machine that groove in there with like a fucking 2 mil cutter, right? A CNC 2 mil cutter. Jobs are good, and that would be that. As far as this design goes, you know, this specific design. That's it. One, two, plunge cut, plunge cut. Oh, no. Plunge cut circle, groove, plunge cut circle, turn it over, plunge cut circle, plunge cut, and then groove. And that would be it. You imagine, right? You imagine. With a, a piston, you've got to forge it, right? I will we'll go with forging, right? So you get a billet, you squash it into its shape. Right, and then you've got to put it in a chuck, and the outside bore is machined. Then you've got to machine the crown a lot of the time with some of them. It depends. Some of them when they're forged, it's just impressed in there. But you machine the outside, right? You machine the uh, the OD of the actual piston. Then you've got to lime bore the bloody wrist pinhole. Then you've got to come in there and you've got to cut the ring groove. Then you've got to machine the ring grooves, which is as you do the outer bore, you then do the you know the ring grooves um you then got to cut the taper on it which is part of the you know boring process at uh, the turning the od process then you've got a line drill and line bore that because it, it'll be a hole but it won't be anywhere near so you use a core drill drill it through and then you line bore it ream it and then you get in there you've got to do your ring groove you've then got to turn it upside down there's then your holes for your oil feed they've got to come in at a dodgy angle right and then you do some kind of back machining usually cut an inside lip it's to reduce the weight and stuff like that and then usually it's attached to a bit of stock so you can grab all of it properly and center it you've got to then cut that off and then machine that surface flat right that is a piston right so with this there it is mill mill right and then once you've milled it it's a, another head but it's a mill operation and a mill operation you could even mill this flat right and then mill this in because you can use this bore right and then you've got to mill this and bore this now i know people might be saying well what about this bore you can extrude to the point because you just put an insert in you can extrude this pretty much to size, but even then, just say if you weren't, you were going to ream this. It's still a milling operation. With a piston, you've got to stick in a chuck, do the outside bore, but in that lathe, you can turn it and a head come in and do the line bore and stuff. Your been it's not very accurate that way. It's meh, because you've got to make sure you bang on on centre in the right. It's meh. You can do it, right? These CNC machines can do it. It's just, you know what I mean? Um, but that's just the piston, right? That's what you've also got to remember. Then you've got the rod side of things. So you've got a forged rod, and then you need to drill and bore the two, um, or ream, line bore, whatever, or well, not line bore, but you've got to bore out, ream, the two holes, big end and small end. You've got to face off the two sides. So basically the con rod that you have, this is that, right? This is that con rod, apart from it's got this groove to put in. But with con rods, sometimes you've got to use that end. Sometimes you've got to put little oil feed holes or an oil feed hole right up its jacksy. You know what I mean? So this is basically the machining process you need for a con rod. Minus the piston, minus making a wrist pin, gudgeon pin full stop, which is a lot of radial grinding and, you know, all that gubbins. No ring grooves. Not, well, there's a ring groove, but then these are extruded. You might have to mill down there just to get them to tolerance, probably, actually. That's, that's a definite. But still, that's a milling process, right? You just come in with your end mill or whatever, or it's turned this way and you use a, a you know, slitting saw, whatever. The fact of the matter is, 
there's a whole lot of less processing for this than there is your piston, wrist pin, gudgeon pin, and conrod, and all the associated bearings and stuff. At the end of the day, we're missing a, a, a wrist pin, so you don't need the bearings or the wrist pin itself. You can either add a bearing if it's a two-stroke, or you just have a, a you know a semi-floating wrist pin or a floating wrist pin, whichever. The fact of the matter is, is you don't need those things. So if you think as an assembly, just from a bomb point of view, piston, rings, piston, rod, rings, bearing, insert, which bushing, you know what I mean? That's it. Where with a two-stroke piston and con rod assembly, you've got rod, bearings, bearing, wrist pin, clips, piston, rings you know what i mean there's a lot of parts a lot of weight and a lot of shit missing so you know i do you know i love about two strokes how simple they are you can make it even more simple right and this is how we're gonna do it i'm going to make the most simple two stroke in the fucking world right but i'm even thinking about getting rid of this getting rid of this and getting rid of this and just having a an imaginary two stroke it's fucking look at it it's fucking amazing 48 cylinders but all joking fucking around um aside i'm trying to make this as ridiculously simple as possible and it's not just here right i'm not just stopping it it's not just this and this um just so if you're coming along late to these things and the snazzy title or whatever got your attention this is part something of something i think this is part six or seven um but number two is this is not my design, right? This is from a guy called Norman Hossack who designed the, the, the basic principle of this, of this no, uh, piston rod combo, this nodding. The nodding dog, as I like to call it, right? This is Norman's um, idea, not mine. This is my version, if you want to put it that way. Any road. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.